Sisters and Brothers, episode 11. I'm absolutely buzzing. My favourite actor in the whole world. He self-deprecated, he hates compliments, but I had to say it. Paddy, thank you, brother. Mate, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm nervous, I'm buzzing, and I'm excited because there's about two or three of your things you've done. I'm a movie buff that have changed, that are my go-to things. And we'll get on about the Dead Man's Shoes and a few of those, but we'll start off with a little quick fire because you're into your box and music and obviously movies, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it, yeah. Hagler or Hearns? I was a Tommy Hearns fan. Oh, I was I Hagler. I love Tommy. I was Hagler. Yeah. So you're Hearns all the way? Yeah, you either, you pick one of the four, didn't you, of the, of the four so kings? So Sugar Ray, yeah. Hagler, Hearns, yeah, Duran. Duran. Yeah. I mean, over, obviously, I, I love them all, and they're all great fighters, but I just had a thing about Tommy Hearns. when I was a teenager. Yeah. 99% of people that I ask about that, they always go Hagler. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? I love Tommy. I love his vulnerabilities as well, yeah. you know, he had the... Here's some right hand, a great jab, but a pretty... In my opinion, the best, uh, the best uh, decade of boxing for that division was the Hearns, Hagler, Sugar Ray and Duran. Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, it, it, in some ways, it puts the modern era to shame. Because, shame, yeah. You know, we remember them because they fought each other. Each other. Not waiting for 15 yeah. years like Mayweather and Pacquiao when it's all yeah. a bit too late. They were like, let's do it now. Let's do it. I mean, Ray waited a bit. He made Hagler wait a little bit for that fight. Watched him get that little yeah, bit older, closer. But... But um, that's why we remember him. That's why we remember like um, Eubank, Ben, and Watson. But they, they all fought each other. Got to get onto those two because yeah. that's another divide. Um, Fury, Joshua. Oh, Tyson Fury all the way. Never missed a fight since he turned over. Same here. I've been on set with him on on, a, on the telly. Really? Yeah, yeah. Even when he was doing Ke- fighting Kevin Johnson, we were shooting the World's End. And I was just running back in in between takes up, up at the telly watching him there um, so you fighting live. Do you like him because of the personality as well? I think my like of Tyson Fury came because I, I knew one of his relatives, a, a bare knuckle fighter called Bartley Gorman. Who <laughs> Sounds was from, Yeah, But he was a wonderful man, AD. He was a funny man. And, and a lot of what Tyson uh, used to come out with reminded me a lot of Bartley. He had a lot of his sort of banter and swagger. But there was something underlying that, that even when Bartley spoke, there was always a sense of humour and a glint in his eye about yeah. it, a touch of the alley of the gypsies about him. And I think Tyson Fury's got that same quality in him. Do you think people underestimate, underestimate because Joshua and all the other heavyweights are very masculine and fit and ripped and six packs, do you think because he's not your quintessential body for a heavyweight that that's overshadowed? I think he's technically the best heavyweight. He, he absolutely, in my humble opinion, I just think he's footwear. When people watch boxers, it's like when I watch footballers. When I go to Anfield or Madrid, I focus on the player that I admire and I don't watch the game. I focus in, same as a movie. Yeah. I'm looking at backdrop, I'm looking at lighting. Probably because I go in too intense into things, but when I look at Tyson, I go, technically, he's a master, mate. Yeah. I think with Tyson Fury, that if, if, you, if you're comparing him and Anthony Joshua, Tyson's been around it since he was a little kid. He's, he's grown up around it. Yeah. He's seen men punching bags outside trailers and all that. And he's, he's got he's that been around it. I can imagine his dad and Bartley and, and them standing around talking about the great fighters. Yeah. Right back to Jem Mace and John L. Sullivan. And yeah. the, the, the knowledge is, is deep with them. I think Tyson's been around it since he was a little boy. So a lot of the things that he's learned and his style of fighting, it's been ingrained in him from a very young age. So I think for Tyson now to take on anything new technically in his training, it's not that big of a... Of a yeah. It doesn't have to adapt as much as someone like Anthony Joshua, who came to it later. And you think still he's still feels... having to recreate himself yeah. because he hasn't got that... It's like, I suppose it's like acting, isn't it? Yeah. When, you, when you're... You'll have, a, you'll have a couple of scenarios where you'll have someone that's... Mike Tyson was naturally born, in my opinion, to box. Yeah. Some people have to work at it. Yeah. Not to say he didn't with Customado, but I truly believe he was built, designed to punch people in the face. Yeah. I think, with, the same with acting, the same with football. Some people have that raw, natural ability. I think with Tyson, he had natural ability yeah. from a young age, and yeah. then it was just in his DNA, as with Joshua, he was a bit of a lad. Yeah. Got into boxing to keep him out of prison. Amazing fighter, but I just love the intricacies 
people see the, the slightly other way and the not so perfect yeah, body. Yeah. I'm looking at his feet and his little ducks and his little wheeze with, with Deontay and I'm thinking, oh my God, this guy's speed and footwork is insane. Yeah. But I suppose if you're a boxing purist, you will see that. Yeah, I think I think people as well have got too sort of distracted by the aesthetic AD mm. too. They think that that's a perfect athlete is someone who's ripped to pieces, but it doesn't suit Tyson Fury. No. And throughout history, like the heavyweights weren't really ripped anyway. No, it was even rare. Ali, Ali wasn't ripped. Yeah, yeah, he was no. never ripped, no. even when he was younger. Wasn't bad though, was he? No, he was pretty good. But I think, yeah, going back, it's, the, it's those fundamentals. It's that boxing brain that people talk about. He, he has an awareness of where every corner yeah. and every rope is, and he's and always he's one six, step eight ahead. As well, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, he's my he's. I mean, Mike Tyson's my favourite boxer. Alan Minter, I exaggerate, is. When I was a kid growing up, yeah. Alan Minter, we're the same, I'm a year older than you. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're 73, you're 73, yeah, 73 yeah. Alan Minter was the first, believe it or not, yeah. not trendy boxer. And, but then it was um, Mike Tyson yeah. changed the game for me. Yeah. And Alex Higgins in snooker, yeah. George Best in football. All, all the greats at everything, Eddie, they transcend the sport, don't and they? And flawed. Yeah. All flawed, the people I've mentioned. Yeah. Geniuses, but flawed geniuses. De Niro Pacino. Oh. That's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> They've both done so... so I mean, it's swings and roundabouts, isn't it, really? Yeah, it Silly is. Silly question, really, isn't it? It's no, a bit they've of a... Got, they're both powerhouse actors, yeah. and I think... But when they were at the height of doing great, the greatest work that they did, I, just, I think there was great material around as so well at the time. We'll, we'll leave that as a... I can't pick one. They're both too good. Jimi Hendrix, Phil Lynott, and then Lizzie. I think I'd I think I'd have to tip on the Hendrix train with that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Beatles or Stones? Oh the Beatles. Oh you're a Beatles? The Beatles, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I'm Stones all the way. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can understand yeah. that. They, they... I mean, but saying that the Beatles I mean the Beatles are the Yeah, they're the connoisseurs of, of music. I mean they, they changed the, the platter of music, didn't they? They they transcended what was happening at the time. Yeah. As with the Beatles. I mean the Stones, I suppose, but I just, I suppose, again, I'm going back to, I always pick characters. Yeah, great characters, but both great bands and yeah, shouldn't yeah. really be compared. It's like Ter in the 90s we had Oasis and Blur and you yeah. go, well, they're polar opposites of each other. I don't, they shouldn't even be in the same... Stone uh, Rose's Primal Scream. Ah, now. That's a naughty one, ain't it? That's, that's tough because... Uh, <laughs> I love it. I did yeah. one last week with Tamar with um, um, oh, Ben God. Kingsley and who did I say? Ben Kingsley and um, uh, Ray Winston. And he was like, oh, mate. I'm, Don't stitch him up like yeah, that. He's like, mate, I've worked with them both. And he went, <laughs> but, but Ray's my boy. But I, I, Stone uh, Rose's primal scream. You know, made it. just the other Saturday, I had a primal scream like a few hours just playing nothing but Primal Scream. What's the legendary album? Um, uh, Scream of Delica. Scream of Delica, man. Yeah. If you looked at my iPad or uh, iPhone, I only have 30 albums. But I... Three of them are hours. <laughs> and you'll probably look at it afterwards and go, oh my God, I've downloaded... We'll get on to writing the loud, download a bit of that stuff as well. Don't worry about that. But I, uh, I'm, I'm less is more. Yeah. Same with movies. There's only certain movies. My favourite movie is Behind That Wall. It's called Kez. I mean, do you know what? Oh, Kez? absolutely. Ken Loach, yeah. Ken Loach, yeah. yeah. It's my Funny enough, I've just been in, in the offices of his film oh. company. And, and I only say that because as you're walking up the stairs, there's like posters for My Name Is Joe and... Uh, the wind that shakes the barley, everything like that. And in the room I was just in, there was a beautiful old poster of Kez in there. Well, I've got the signed, he signed the, the, the disc, the album, the, the, oh, the award, and I bought it in an auction. I went, I don't care what it costs. So that's, that's my... Yeah, great film. Great movie. Uh, right then, The Clash or The Pistols? Pistols. Great answer. Pistols. Win an Oscar or a Grammy? None. <laughs> What's that? I wrote it down here. Self. It sounds awfully bitter, doesn't no, it? No, self-deprecating. You know something? I, I keep saying that word now. You know that you taught me that word. Another word I learned the other night from one of my favourite movies is obtuse. Yeah, obtuse is a good word. Right. It was in Shaw a Shawshank where he's in the prison cell and he yeah. goes, "I promise I won't mention the fact that you're doing that." And the guy went, "How dare you be obtuse? It's just a great word, but you're self-deprecating." Yeah. That's why I'm giving you no compliments, not hyping you up too much because you actually hate it, don't you? Uh, yeah, no, you do. <laughs> uh, New York or London? 
I've been in London so much lately, I want to go back to New, New York. York. I haven't been for a few years. Nobu or Sunday Roast? Sunday Neither. Roast. Oh, really? I've, I've never been to Nobu. I love you. Oh, Jesus, it's Gene. I, was, I actually was going to say, what's Nobu? Yeah, this is a good one for you, actually, because it's not your kind of thing, because you're not into that high glam movies, but the next Bond. I don't, I don't really know. Don't I have, don't have much of an interest opinion. in it. Yeah, that's what Just I was, as the thing, I've never, um, I've seen a couple of Daniels, Craig, uh, uh, yeah, uh, James Bonds. I nearly called him Craig Daniel then. Craig David. Yeah, Craig <laughs> David. <Shamal. laughs> <laughs> Daniel Craig, James Bond. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, but um, I, I thought it was not your, because yeah, it's I'm just. Yeah, I'm not a massive watcher of James Bond, yeah, really. Yeah, and it's a bit. When, even when I was a kid, he wasn't somebody that appealed to me as a, as a hero. You know, I always found him a bit... Because you're a bit more edgy and a bit more cool. Well, to me, he was just, like, a bit middle, upper class, well, you know. Well, Bond and... used to be a bastard. Yeah, Bond, apparently so. I mean, I mean he, he was a, he was a womaniser bastard. Yeah. And Bond's turned into a man who cries and a man who falls in love. So I'm from the old school of Bond, Roger Moore, Sean Connery. Yeah. King and I. Is it, what was the famous Sean Connery movie? With Man We, is it the King and I or the Man Who Would Be King? The Man Who Would Be King. Yeah. I mean, I'm an, I, I love some of um, um, Sean Connery's old stuff, but he was a great Bond. But he was a bastard. But the new Bonds now, I feel as if we need to go back to him being. Yeah. Favorite gig you ever attended? Oh gosh. Tough one. There's a few of these. Um, I've got to pick one. I, I, I absolutely love a band called Guided by Voices. I've heard of it. And yeah. I've been all over America to see them. And Robert Pollard is there. I knew you'd have a quirky, so <laughs> unusual sort of underground band that only the fucking connoisseurs of music will go, oh, yeah, man. It's like, I'm expecting you to go. I went to see um, Led Zeppelin. Oh, that must have been great. At the O2. Remember they came back for one gig? Yes, yeah. And the ticket cost more than a car. Oh, oh, I bet, yeah. I didn't care. And I'm not super wealthy Do at all. Do you remember old. who was playing drums for them then? Was, oh, it, was it... I was just... Um, you were just there for the music and, yeah. Jimmy Page and that, I was just like... But Zeppelin, and I went to see U2 in Miami. Yeah, what tour was that? Ah, uh, this was 2000 and it was... Um, was it the Pop Mart tour? It was where the, the was spider... The, 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 the ant glasses... Oh, the, oh, the, oh, like, um, I saw them at Wembley on the Zoo Rope. That's tour. the one, yes, oh, yes. They were phenomenal. And in Miami, I flew out on my own. Yeah. And I was like, but yeah, but Zeppelin, even though it was thir- his voice was still there. Yeah, wow. Proper band. Uh, Favourite movie? I think it's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Ah, oh, Jack Nicholson. Yeah, I love that film. I that's, think that's, it's, yeah, that's, I was amazing. expecting you to come out with another like another obscure f- underground French movie from the new wave. And the last <laughs> one, uh, favorite band, guided by voices. Oh, so that is your favorite yeah. band? Yeah. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Changed my head. Get, when I got into guided by voices and Bob's writing, it it flipped. It was like it uh, it just switched something on in me creatively that it's still a source of inspiration to me now. I love his well, lyrics. How long do they go back there? They're not. Like... Oh, into like I mean, I think in the eighties they started making oh, music, right. but they're still still going now. I mean, there's lots been lots of band members coming and going, but Bob's still putting out albums and, and gigging in his sixties now. But they're I, I just think he's an incredible writer. I love that him. quick fire round is supposed to last sixty seconds. No way. But. The last one I did, the whole quick round took the whole podcast because <laughs> one of the guys went, oh, no, nah, mate, I can't just ignore Sir Ben Kingsley. Yeah. I, I did a, an afternoon lunch with uh, Ray Winston and I bought his underpants from Sexy Beast. <laughs> and he's a bit like you, doesn't really like talking about what he does, but he, I did say to him, just, do you mind me asking about that one scene with Sir Ben? And he went... Yeah, he went, he stayed in a villa in the mountains on his own to get yeah. into character. And he went, you know, the hot, have you seen Sexy Beast? Yeah, yeah. No, have, no, yeah. no, 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 you know, really aggressive, horrible. Not, yeah. And he went, he stayed in a villa, kept well away from us all until them scenes were done. Because yeah. he needed to be that. I was like, it's great British. I mean, Mona Lisa, Long Good Friday. Great films. Bob Hoskins, love yeah. Bob Hoskins. But Sexy Beast, cons- it's a, more of a consumer movie. It's one of my... But like I said, Kez is my number one. 
Yeah, it's beautiful. Jaws, believe it or not, the original. It's a great movie. <sighs> it's a brilliant film. And um, Kez. Yeah, yeah. Mind you, Blade Runner 1, Ridley Scott. That's great. I did have, actually, I had Scorsese or Scott, but again, they're probably directors that your, jo- your genre of movies are probably... I don't know, I think prob- I've, I've loved what both What was your favourite movie again? Uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. One Flew Over the Jackanese. Who was the director there? Milos Forman. Right. Yeah. Of course it's going to be. D- <laughs> I went to all the pro- do- d- directors and producers on, on Instagram and on Google last night. I went, what would Paddy? I went, oh, it's got to be, it's got to, it can't be Tarantino who go, no, a bit too modern kid. Do some homework. I thought, <laughs> Scorsese, Ridley Scott, uh, Blade Runner. And you went, oh, no. One no, Flew no. Over the Cuckoo's Nest way off it's May. a great film mate you've seen it haven't you oh yeah of course yeah it's a great I film. mean I did a show at Wembley and I did it in New York in front of 25,000 people at Mandalay Bay where we did a um, it was Videl Sassoon's it was an anniversary of Videl. in my industry he was like the god yeah and I did a stage performance where I used I used One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest with the company I worked with Lee Stafford and we we had Crazy Horse. What's that song? What's the band called? That yeah, song? the Osmonds. Is it? No, it, it's a really hard song. Crazy the Horses. horses. Right. Yeah, yes, yeah, so it's a really. And yeah, we it's did, the Osmonds. And I'm dressed in a, a um, straight jacket and I have a big <laughs> split eye. And all the characters that a little girl came out was given flowers. So we did the whole concept was based on. One floor of the cuckoo's nest. Really? So we had a spiv who came out and he had watches in his jacket and we had the girl handing out flowers like a completely gone in the head. Yeah. And I was in the straight jacket with a pair of DMs on, so it was kind of like one floor of the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> I want to see that. Ah, dead man's shoes. I mean, I could have just, all these little silly little questions, I don't know why I bothered. Dead man's shoes is my go-to movie. And I didn't know that you co-wrote it. Yeah, yeah. So... We wrote it originally, and it was a, we were trying to write a comedy film about a vigilante. It was crazy. And then we, we just sort of got to a point with it where... Had you worked with Sean Meadows before then? Yeah, yeah. I, I, oh, I, you did... Um... We did A Room for Romeo Brass, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, we were writing this thing that was started out as a comedy, and then, you know, it just wasn't working as, a, as, a, as an idea. And I remember, like, I was going to, like, the boxing club in Burton, and I was just going to keep fit. You know, that's why I'm not a boxer or anything, but it's the only form Even of exercise. Even though you're in Cinderella, man. Yeah, <laughs> but it's the only form of exercise I ever yeah. did. You know, and... and um, well, how did it go from a comedy? Well, we just finished, like, having a bit of a training, and Shane had come down with me, and we stood outside afterwards, and we'd had a conversation on the lines of, this isn't, you know, something isn't working. And then we started to talk about people who, were, who had been bullies where we grew up, and some of the things that had happened to, to people in the areas or towns that we'd grown up in, and they're actually crimes, but they were never done for it, or, it, you know, people's lives would be, like spiking someone with, with acid, was and someone blowing their head, having a nervous breakdown, and it ruining their fucking lives. And that is, it's kind of seen as, well... It's yeah, oh, fuck that, it was a joke that now, went wrong. Now it's like, with everything yeah. back then... It's not on. But, but still, though, you started off doing a comp... It was ba- going to be based around a vigilante, but how did it go from that? Because it's one of the darkest movies ever made. Well, we started made. having this conversation about these people going, God, they, they, these people went unpunished and they did cruel things to people. And that's where the, where the sort, sort, sort of first idea starts to form of like, maybe, we'd, maybe we're going down the wrong path here. Maybe we should do something that's a bit darker, sort of closer to home and, and dealing with these themes more than, more than uh, trying to uh, create some comedy that isn't working. But I remember like the conversation we had with the producer, um, Mark Herbert, and I'd, I'd done a couple of things with Mark, but he was relatively new to Shane at the time, where they've worked together a lot now over the years, and I remember the conversation telling him we're not doing a comedy anymore. And him going, oh, right, okay. Because um, he had to go to finances and go, oh, oh, they've decided it's not going to be a comedy now. Out of all the work, and you've obviously done um, uh, uh, short movies, low-budget movies that have gone on to be... I mean, is it fair to say Dead Man's Shoes wasn't a huge budget? Millions? No, yeah, it wasn't a lot. I mean, I, I, I couldn't tell you exactly, but I, I, it wasn't a lot. Have all. you ever seen it? Please tell me you've seen it. Oh, that. I've seen oh, Dead Man's Shoes, yes. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. That would have been... You know, you were mentioning your favourite band earlier. Yeah. I know you don't get excited about anything. I don't mean that horribly, but I can tell if you won the lottery, you'd be like, oh, nice. I'll put that towards a tour. 
and yeah, great. Yeah, you invest it in the things. But you wouldn't you... be like, imagine meeting the band that you said earlier that you were into. Yeah. Talking about Dead Man's Shoes with you is that is that mad little buzz for me, mate. It yeah. is. It is a movie that I've watched five hundred times. Do you I know, know every what? line. I know every scene. When it comes to the that particular scene where you spike everyone in the yeah. house, yeah. Who's the who's the one of the actors in it? I always forget his name, and it's so disrespectful. There's, Not, there's Stuart Wolf and Dunn who's in it. Um, obviously, he, Gary Stretch was in it. No, this the, the shorter guy. Stuart Wolfen, he probably in, he's in some amazing movies. Yeah. He's always plays this this the he's always suffering in his movies. Yeah, yeah. That scene where you go into the house and you spike them all, mate, is a fucking scary scene. Yeah. And every time I watch it, I build myself up for it. Really? Because I think my biggest fear, because of mental health and everything would be to be spiked with acid. I, I, I suffered with that for ages, with a fear of that. Just that, I would prefer to be tied up and tortured than be given yeah. a, a micro dot and put in a room with a guy with an army jacket and a mask on. Yeah. I mean, when I watch it, I'm like, but it's such an amazing, the way it's shot. I think Gary Stretch was great in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole thing, mate, was beautifully done. Do you, write, do, you, do you put that as one of your pieces of work that you say, I'm proud of that, I'm, I'm kind of cool with that? I think... I know you don't like... No, no, it's not that. It's just, um, <laughs> it, you know... Um, Go on, give it. Give it, give it. <laughs> Out of everything you've done, what's the one thing then? Forget, I, forget me and my favourite thing, because that is my favourite movie. Yeah. Is, it, where would that rate in your... Things that you would say um, at the end of your day, if someone said, oh, just give us a piece of work that you respect and like that you've done. I don't think about it, Aidy. You don't. I swear to God. That's and this so isn't me being, it's not me being humble. It's not about humility. I, I don't think about it. I, I, I have a very, uh, even films that I've written and directed myself. Yeah. I just, dis it's, it, to me, it's, it's discarded mentally. Been, done, yeah, project, move on. enjoyed it, whatever, yeah. move I'll on. I'll probably never watch that ever again in my life. I, I'll ne I, I wrote and directed a film called Tyrannosaur. I'll probably never watch that ag ever again. Um, what about Cinderella Man then? Oh, no, I'll never watch that again, no. I, don't, I just don't, I don't, it's, it's very strange to me. I don't feel like I own any of them. Is that why, do you think, we won't talk about the Oscars because it's your, I can just imagine, well, that's all that's been on the news. It's mad, the last month it's been Ukraine, real life matters, yeah. people paying their electric bills and gas bills. Isn't it amazing that the last six days, Ukraine's been second? Yeah, to a slap. To a slap. Yeah. I mean, I had a little opinion on it because we all have a little opinion yeah. and I thought, my dad died last year and I walked into a bar two days later, my mate was telling a joke about cancer and I went, oh, 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 don't stop. Yeah. Just because it affects me, I, if comedy affected everyone like that, there'd be no comedy because my dad died of cancer, but that doesn't give me the right to say I don't want to listen to a joke about it. And it, the joke is never about the actual thing. Yeah. And it's like um, uh, this Pete Davison character, his dad died in 9-11 in the towers and he was doing a celebrity roast. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Oh, you did see it? Yeah. And he went, um, the, Jeff Ross did a joke about, I haven't seen ashes like that since Pete Davison died. And everyone in the crowd didn't find it funny. And Pete Davison went, no, 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 no. Carry on, it's fucking yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And then he did a joke. I think, I love Ricky Chavez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's very intelligent. And I think comedy, you can't be offended. You can't be. No matter how distasteful or how it, how it has affected you, whatever the, the, the topic is, I think you've just got to just gotta go. Especially if you're sitting in the front of a stage, mate. I just found the whole thing a little bit. But the after thing, I'm like, there's a war going on. I got my electric bill through today and I'm like, it's gone up three times, mate. Yeah. And people gonna, are living in three up, two down bed sits, masonettes, and I'm thinking, six days later. That's probably why Hollywood for you is probably... So you wouldn't be turned on by an Oscar? Um, It'd be nice, don't you? would. It's that's... I, I, no, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> turned on by it. No, it's, 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 it's a weird thing to talk about because um, the chances of you winning something like that are very, very... The odds are very much Yeah, but saying that, because there. of the stuff that you do... I think you, I put you in the same... That you have to be careful, lady, that yeah. you don't put, put your well-being into 
uh, you know, the, the idea of winning trinkets, that it's somehow going to give you a greater sense of well-being or of achievement or accomplishment, it doesn't. I've got, I won two BAFTAs and they're in a box in the loft. Really, Paddy? They're not even in my house. I don't have anything in my house that reflects my film work at all. That's crazy, isn't it? Well, it's not crazy. Yeah. I think it's cool. I've seen people lose themselves in that, in that competition. Yeah. I've seen them turn depressive and miserable and competitive. You know, it's not uh, uh, the, what, the, what people see is in the full story. Yeah. I've seen it transform people for the worst. Wow. You know, when they haven't won. And it's ugly. Yeah. And I'm like, it's just a fucking trinket. You know, it's an like, opinion it's, as well, isn't it? You know, I get it. You know, you want to, but, but it's a strange thing. Nice to win it, but you would, if you win it, you turn up, you say thank you. You, you see it for what it is. It is, and, yeah. And, and you, you, just, you don't invest your soul in it. And you say, thank you very much. This is really great. So when be... you picked up your BAFTAs, you were like... No, I I've, I've thanked the people. I yeah. can't remember what I said, but, um, <laughs> you know, the difference with my BAFTAs was that my film came out, Tyrannosaur, and... It wasn't put among the big guns. It wasn't even in for British film. Right. Which something like Dead Man's Shoes was, or My Summer of Love was. But Tyrannosaur wasn't. And, in, and you look retrospectively and you go, well, it should have. And Olivia Coleman should have been up for yeah, Best Actress. God. She ain't done too bad. She's done okay. I, she, I bet she's humble as, as pie, isn't she? She's great, yeah. yeah. But the point is, like, my, the, when it was my BAFTA, it wasn't out to voters like people in, in, in the wide world of the voters. It was 12, I think a dozen of my peers, like right. Asif Kapadia, people like that, that sat around a table and decided that mine would get the, right. the award. So real opinion. So it just felt a bit different because yeah. I'm going, oh, at least my peers thought it was good. And with the Oscars, I'm told it's 12,000. Yeah, and people get those screeners and they don't watch them. Yeah, you know they don't root. Th they don't root through them and, and dig out all the films. They go, and I know people who are members of BAFTA that when they get the screeners through, they just watch all the headline films. Right. You know they don't really so do all a the deep underground, dive. undercover ones, and all the kind of little gems, probably. Yeah. It's such a shame, isn't it? It's just a lot. There's a lot of films out there, and they can't physically watch them. These people can't. I just find it a little bit like you know you've just got to do your your work. Cr cr create your stories, your art, and move on from it. And Pick that, up your paycheck, do your job, yeah. pay your mortgage, and just if it gets something great, if not. And it's true, all the greatest movies aren't necessarily Oscar winning movies. Why should it matter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, it doesn't matter to the, me. The, no, not to you, but yeah. like the, the, I, I made this film called Journeyman, and my oh, first film, Tyrannosaur, Amazing. went to every festival. I think we could count nearly 40 awards that that Yeah, film it got uh, the Sundance Festival, it won the uh, uh, Toronto Film Festival. I went yeah. to, uh, I think, it last it night. It went all over the gaff, right? I was just like, ding, 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 ding. I was like, oh my God. Well, Did you Journeyman, pick up any of them? Um, I think, no, we weren't, because they were out in, in Sundance, that's obviously uh, Utah, so I was at uh, home when I heard about it, but, you know, it's, it's a strange one, because then Journeyman came along, and nobody wanted it, nobody was interested. My film had gone to every festival pretty much around the world, and here's my second film, and all of a sudden people were like, no, we're not interested. And so we're in a, I was in a situation, then where I thought, well, I know it's not a perfect film, I'd have done a lot of things differently about it, but, but, but it can't be that shit, surely. It can't be that bad that nobody wants it. London had it, Glasgow had it. Film 4 were begging other festivals, literally begging them to have my film and they didn't want it. And so I thought, fucking hell, you know. I thought I'd made a failure. Yeah. It came out, it did nothing. People watched it on planes and shit like that. That's where I was getting the reaction from Yeah, people. but that's the same as... Um Shawshank Redemption was a flop. It was a flop, yeah. Complete I, flop. I went to the cinema to watch that because I was a Stephen King fan. But, but this is the point I'm coming to, AD, uh, trying to get there, um, so trying you, to cut you, out all the bollocks. So you made something point, that um, you thought was, was a pretty decent, good quality watch. I thought, you know, as a filmmaker, I thought it, it, it could have been, there were things about it that could have been technically better. Yeah. I was in it. I was playing this character and I was so steeped in the character yeah. that sometimes I forgot to wear my director's hat yeah. because I was so steeped in this story and the characters. So I looked at it in the cutting room and I went, you've missed opportunities, you've missed things really? because you were so in it. But I thought I'd made a failure. And in the eyes of all these institutions, it looks like a failure. But then the other night I was watching a documentary about Michael Bisping 
I watched it. And Michael Bisping tells the story of him. He's, got, he's lost the sight in one eye. One he's eye. lost one eye. He's about to lose the other. They, the doctors have said, you, if you don't give it up, you, you're going to go blind. And he for four years, didn't Yeah. They? But he's losing the sight in the other eye, and he's flying to New York, and he watches Journeyman on the plane. He, he says so in his movie, he, he cries in it. He, he cries when he's watching it, and he gets off the plane, he goes into his podcast and makes the announcement. They think it's, he's going to say, you know, I'm, I'm, this is my next fight, but he says, I'm retiring. And Journeyman wow. was the thing that just kind of, there was, there was something that he saw in front of him that just made him make that decision that was probably already in his mind anyway. Yeah. But he went, that's it, that could be my life. I, I, I'm, I, that's it, I'm not taking any more chances. And I'm going, that's power. Yeah. You know, that's power when you can create work and it affects other people's lives in that way. And seeing his documentary and seeing your work that I thought was a worthless piece of shit, seeing it within context of somebody else's life story in a movie, yeah. I was absolutely moved to tears. So now that, so now, so and even I got though- shit with Journeyman, Aiden. Yeah, really? Fucking shit with it. And I thought I was a failure. And I went, thematically, the heart of that film affected people, and that's its power. And well, it's nothing to do with you anymore. It's, it's, like, it's like the dead man's shoes for me. I mean, there's loads of things you've done, like the comedy stuff. World's End, I actually love the World's End, by the way. Yeah. I never put you with comedy, but actually when I see your comedy, you did Hot Fuzz. Hot Fuzz, yeah. The boy, uh, Simon Pegg and Frost, Cool Cats. Oh, yeah, 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 great. A lot of fun working with them. They're brilliant, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I brilliant. do love the World's End, though. I do love that. Peaky Blinders. Yeah, that was fun. I loved doing Season that. Season three, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're I, perfect for that, yeah. Yeah. That's right up your street, isn't it? I did. I was just about to go on a, uh, a weight loss for, for Journeyman, and that came in. And I was a few pound heavier, and I thought, hmm. See, when I look at a script, I didn't think, wow. here's a priest. I thought, and I'd never watched Peaky Blinders, I must, must confess. Really? And I thought, this guy's not a priest. He's a bare knuckle fighter. Yeah. He's a heavyweight champion of the fucking Isn't world. it mad that boxing comes into your... Yeah, it's I think it's that competitive thing. So when I went into Peaky Blinders, the, what, what proved to be that character's downfall was he thought he was protected by powerful people and he had n no regard whatsoever for the Shelbys. So he walked around like he was, you know, the daddy. Yeah. And that was his downfall in it. But I never played him as a... I never thought, oh, this guy's a priest. I thought he was a complete phony. Yeah. Just a gluttonous pig who thought he was protected by people higher than him. So sometimes it's not, oh, I'm a priest. Yeah. Sometimes you're in the clothes, but underneath it's it... It's just a silhouette, the clothes, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. something else, you yeah. know. So Great it was power. fun. I mean, I only watched up to season four, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean... It's how many seasons have there been? I think, I it's think been... six, is it? Oh, right, six. Maybe, but, but he was, and, and Killian was an absolute, yeah. oh, he was a lovely guy to work with. He did a great, are you into your football at all, buddy? Not really right. anymore, no. But Gary Neville does a great thing with Roy Keane, where it's called the, um, he does it like he walks and talks to famous I've football. seen it, and they go for a walk. And, and he goes about, Killian Murphy comes up, and, and Roy Keane, and Gary Neville goes, I asked him for a pitch, and he went, no, I'm going back to work now. And Roy Keane looks at Gary Neville and says, oh, do you not like him because of that? And, and Roy Keane said, I get it. I don't know why people <laughs> are obsessed with photos and pictures. And he's like, I was going to ask Muhammad Ali once for a picture. Yeah. And I thought, you're probably the Roy Keane <laughs> of the movie world, aren't you? I get it. You get I it. I completely and get where Roy acting, Keane's coming And I know from. generally, genuinely, you're like that. And I know that Roy Keane is generally like, don't understand Roy it. Keane's like, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. What are you going to do? Put it I, on I mean, for my job and work, I have to do a bit of it because, you know. Yeah. In my career, I have to do a certain amount of PR because I own brands and stuff, but I kind of get it. I'd love to be that person that was like, nah, not interested. I was backstage once at this festival in Benny Cassim. And I, I'm too much of a people pleaser. I want people to, yeah. you know, I want to be okay. You know, there's sometimes, you know, it's not an appropriate moment to have a photograph or whatever, <laughs> or to be disturbed. When you're in the middle of a birthday meal with yeah. your wife and kids, you know, someone's going, oh. excuse me, and you're going, fucking read it, man. I'm, I'm yeah. like... <laughs> oh, I can imagine you in that. I'm thinking of dead man's shoes. <laughs> but you still, but you still... Oh, mate, I was sat with my kids having a meal once uh, in Derby, and there was a knock on the window, like... 
And I looked up in this youth went, you're fucking there, mate. <laughs> and I went... <laughs> But he's probably <laughs> gone on buzzing and that, and you're thinking... What can you do? Yeah, I What can you do about it? Last little one on the boxing movie. So, Cinderella Man. I loved making Cinderella Man. I only had a small little part in that, but it was one of the best experiences of my life. Boxing again? I loved it, yeah. Yeah, I was just like... I've only ever boxing trained just to keep... Try and get weight yeah. off and keep But fit. you keep getting these little... These little bits and pieces. It's mad, isn't it, how you keep... Yeah. Boxing's a great metaphor for a lot of things, though, and I'm not a fighter. I don't like getting punched in the head. I've got a mate who was a pro boxer, and he says to me once, he goes, Paddy, he goes, you know, he goes, um, you, you, you know that feeling when, like, you know, you, you're sparring and, and someone hits you on the nose, and that feeling, you go, ooh, and I went, no. No, no, no I don't no, get that no, buzz. The dizziness, no. the fucking wet eyes, the fucking blood out of the nose. You that. can learn a lot about yourself. Yeah. Do, but it's, it's not... It's not just not a turn on for you. They're a different breed. And um, the this is England. Yeah, I don't really have a lot to do with that. You know, that's but not... Shane Meadows. So do you think Shane Meadows goes overlooked as far as directing him? No, I don't think so. No, no, yeah. I think he's I think he's done a lot of um, successful. Do you think he'll be us? I, there's another person I was going to mention, Stephen Graham. Yeah. Com I always put you and him in that thing where he's a lovely dude, mate. Isn't that interesting? He, needs, that he used to come to one of my places to get his barnet done, and yeah. the receptionist, the assistants, everyone was like, oh my God. He's, he's got that scouse charm. Just a nice dude. But again, that sort of <laughs> bloke you can imagine is doing Broadwalk Empire, the Irish man doing all these blockbusters, probably going on to his missile. I just want to go on to I miss find him. Stephen to be quite um, fearless, you know, yeah. and he's very, very hard working. And I would say, if anything, you know, he's, I think he's, you know, it's funny how you say you compare us, but I think Stephen's a very natural actor. But I think humble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not turned on by it all. You can imagine him being with Brad Pitt and be like, I'd bother, yeah, I want to go on to the I think that's what people probably like about yeah. him, that work with him. People like Leonardo DiCaprio. It's always DiCaprio. working, it's always working, isn't and it? And that's another thing as well, he's a very hard working guy. Is that the sign of a, a genuine actor as a person that's constantly working? If, because obviously people are... I don't know Stephen well enough to comment on, yeah. on, on him personally, personally. but... Um, I don't know really. I like to sort of go in and, and then step out a bit. But my thing is, the, the more I'm away from it, the, the, then all the, all the doubts start creeping in with me. I have a whole other world of shit that I have to deal with mentally. You know, when I yeah, it's, my it's, new it's word. horrible. Well, I have a void. I have a cr inner critic that absolutely debilitates me. So I have to be on top of that and aware of that. And last little bit. So the. The one that got away. Is there a role that you went for that again no, you would be interested in? I've never had a problem with it. It's, it's honestly, AD. No, no, no. I, no, I, I know you genuinely <laughs> mean this because when I say this to some people, they go, "Who said it a few weeks ago?" Um, I think it was Tamar Hassan had a. There was a, a layer cake. Do you know the movie Layer? Yeah, Have you ever yeah. seen it? Yeah, I know Layer Cake with Daniel Craig. It's a pretty, really. It's a kind of really good British movie actually. Yeah. And Tamar was supposed to play the gentleman who is the black guy and who does that horrible uh, fight scene in the calf where yeah. he pours the teapot he said that was my that was supposed to be my that character role. and it got away but I can imagine you going oh oh well yeah I, I mean and honestly AD I have my demons man <laughs> yeah I'm not like Mr. Cool and it all floats away from me but I, I'm just one of those people what what what's for you will not pass you by yeah. and I've never so close calls down to you and one other actor. You're I'm like, never getting that situation. Amazing. Sometimes something comes to me. Would you I, prefer I, I, not to direct then than act? Because that way you're in complete control. When when Are I you do, a control freak. When I no, bizarrely, no. I'm 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 a mix of both worlds. I'm wow. very throwaway. Um, I don't know what the, what the difference is. I think it's this, AD, because I never came through acting any kind of acting school. Right. Um, I think I've always had that imposter syndrome within me. And when it came to working with Shane early on, and I'm improvising a lot of things, but I can improvise with anybody. I don't care who you fucking Yeah, are. but Dead Man's Shoes was proper script. Yeah. There was no improvisation. No, no, no. There was, that was like mostly, uh, we had a script, but then right. it turned into improvisation. Really? But, so improvising is not my problem. My problem came when it, here's a script, and I'm going, oh, I, I, don't, I don't know how to break this down. I, I have no work ethic. I don't understand. So... <laughs> 
I, 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 honestly, so literally, you literally it was just a lot of words. And a lot like, of words, and I'm going. I've got to interpret this and make this work somehow. So I fell into bad habits and bad tricks as an actor that I'm still on picking now. The, but don't you think that's the beauty of a great script or a great actor? The beauty of a flawed, like I always look. Listen, Stephen Hen. I don't know if you ever into snooker. Oh, I know. I People know, love yeah, the yeah. technical ability of Steve Davis and Stephen Hendry. They love the professionalism, the way they won multiple titles. Me as a kid, Alex. Alex was smoking. I'm not saying you have to drink and swear and curse to be cool. I, I don't think that at no. all. In fact, I think it's nice to be a gentleman and and be attention to detail and to to work hard. But when I watched Higgins, he, same as Mike Tyson, it was just the, the flaws. Sometimes the flaws in people in in football. As I look at footballers yeah. and boxers and musicians and actors, like the Sex Pistols, technically weren't a great band. No. Technically, couldn't play very well. I listened to a great interview from uh, Noel Gallagher about this, and yeah. technically, but it was just that. Who cares about technically? I understand, AD, yeah. But my, I know in your yeah. game, it, it, listen, there is a difference. You can't just pick up a script and say, oh, no, I'll but I, I understand where you're coming from. I think my, my, my thing has always been to sort of uh, silence that inner critic because it, it can be destructive to me. Right, really? Um, and <laughs> I think it's to sort of, if I can make that that dead man's shoes world and this other sort of world the craft of it meets somewhere in the middle then I think that can be quite potent you know and, and so it's not like if I I remember years ago I worked, worked with an acting coach and, and people were saying well don't you think you're going to lose something and I'm like, how can I lose anything I'm not that, that shit ain't going to suddenly disappear so you it's don't like, think I know what he's probably thinking maybe if you polish up yeah, on the I, things that you think are flaws might take away what makes you... I don't think it will. Yeah, right. I really don't think so it will. Please tell me you still don't have any lessons, though. No, it's, it's, right. it's more about sort of um, co confidence, freedom. Right. Look, it, with the script, I, I couldn't see the freedom in it. Right. A, a, a script was like handcuffs to me. I can play a character. I can put on some glasses and play a character now for you. Yeah. It's not a problem. But when I got a script, I couldn't find the freedom in it. Right. You know, and I have a sort of mildly autistic brain as well. So all I'd have is words in front of me. I've got to remember these words. I've got to remember these words. That takes away from the performance. So the more work, homework I do, the more I am, the free I am of that, the better my performance is. Because 99% of jobs that I get are not improvised. So they're all, they're all like, this is the brief. This is you. Same as me. I can't. I can't read or write properly. So I've made. Look, this is how about most people would have an auto cue and have their notes. I'm not. I've written little things down, and whenever I've done the shows that I've done, I've always said, "Can't give me a script. I'm not an actor. If you want yeah. an actor, pay an actor. But give me a brief, and I'll go through this. I'll yeah. make up my own thing. So I'm good at just." Even commercials, I've done commercials before and I've gone, oh, guys, I've got a problem with, with, with remembering stuff and dialogue. Can I just have the gist of it and make, put my on the light? Oh, that don't quite work. Especially yeah. morning. Tele I got sacked after two days. They went, your voice, your accent, you're, you're not eight o'clock in the morning TV. I went, yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> and plus I couldn't read autocues and kind of like... It's I, that sort of stuff. Yeah. I, I, I've tried to do voiceovers and people will come and send me stuff and go, do you want to narrate oh, this boxing documentary? And I, and, I, and I just go, I can't read. I can't, I can't sight read. I can't read and do, give a performance. I can't do it. So everything has to be... I've got to learn it. I've got to learn it. So you'd be used to that... You know, when you see these presenters and they're looking at autocues, you, you wouldn't I, be able to read autocues. I couldn't do it, no, no. no because the bad ones do that. You can see them, the good presenters, it's as if they're not reading nothing. anything. Yeah, that's they're the like, and, that, and, I, and when I watch bad presenters on telly, I go, oh, mate, you're looking as if you're doing that, where the good ones are like... Yeah. So and also, they know how to do it. They'll move their hands. Yes. They'll... Do they're it. not focusing on the words, they're like coming in and out, and they've probably studied it a little bit and they're just taking a little bit of a brief from it, but you, yeah. you'd be like, it's not your ball game. No. So you have to learn then. I, if I'm going on to a job, then oh I... But I've just done some ADR on this Game of Thrones thing that I've done. It's a prequel to the Game of Thrones. Wow. And I, I just did some, like, ADR on it. Just a little production then. Yeah, a little thing. And, but, but, but I just... And usually I'm dying, and I don't... I didn't like watching myself at all, but I could see how the work was beginning to happen. I can see how I, I've learned to become a little bit freer as, a, as an actor and less restrained by things mentally 
and physically, you know. So the, I just have to do a bit more work than other people do. I can't sit there that morning and learn them. I've tried that. So you have to go over it and over it and yeah. over it and over it and I'm over it. I'm not working. If I'm doing a scene and I'm trying to learn it that morning, I'm literally doing the lines to you and all I'm trying to do is oh, remember no. those lines. Whereas if I've done my homework and I know the lines, I'm freer to move. Piss poor preparation equals piss poor performance. There you go, yeah. So that's what I, I'm, a, I'm a master of. It takes me 50 times longer to do something, but I'll prepare. Yeah. And prepare and prepare. Eat anything I do, design when it comes to my products or brands, I'll spend, I suffer with OCD. I don't know, this for me, if you've seen this during the day, this place, is like a I've showroom. seen it on your, on yeah, your videos. Yeah, I suffer yeah. terribly, Paddy, with anxiety, with cleanliness. Living in bed sits all my life. I, I just, I, I, when I got somewhere nice, I've all, mind you saying that, even when I was in bed sit land, I remember my first bed sit, and the owner came in and went, you've painted that when I do a polo. He went, no one's ever done that. I've always lived clean. Things like this last night, I was up till four in the morning, nervous. Really? And I know for you, it's like it's a little favour. No, you don't like doing these things. And Max, no, I can do that though. Yeah, Max went, oh, he's fucking, the fact that he's doing it, that should take away the nerves. But I went, oh, mate, four o'clock this morning, couldn't sleep last night, anxiety, before you turned up sweaty hands. And then after 60 seconds, I'm like, oh. Yeah, I, I have that. It goes, but it's all that build up. And I say to myself, it's just a little chit chat. Ask a few questions about a few movies, yeah. bit of music, bit of boxing, 30 minutes, which has been 35 done. Second I sat down, it was gone. But until you came, I felt sick, felt ill. And yeah. this is every single job I do, every single award I've ever picked up. Yeah, yeah. Always have a plan of action, turn up and always. My thing, Gade, is when I get a job, then, then the, the, uh, the critic comes in yeah. and my first instinct is to run. So I'll accept <laughs> the job, I'll read the script, I'll react to it, and then I'll accept the job, and then I'll spend the next few weeks regretting, regretting saying, saying, saying yes, yes. yes to it. Why isn't that mad? And I realise now, I'm so far down the line with it now that I realise that it's just a part of my process. So, and, and that's what I do with depression now. I start, I know this is going to sound bizarre to you, I started talking to it. Yeah, yeah. So after, about two years ago, it stopped for a period. I, and when it comes back, I go, oh, you're here. You're going to be here for a few days. I'm going to lock the door, stay indoors, get enough food, and you'll be gone in a few days. I'll, I, can, I actually talk to it, and I'm like, it works, mate, for me. Yeah. Because I know it does go, and I suppose it's like that with anxiety and everything I do. I know, I should have said to myself last night, it's a chit-chat for 30 minutes. What's the worst thing can happen? Someone could sit there and go, and next question, I don't want to talk about that. Who cares? Yeah. But I hype myself up and build myself up into this frenzy of everything I do, even an insignificant, I do a little bit for the Teenage Cancer Trust. Yeah. Given my time doing wigs, I turn up for events and I'm getting nervous about doing something for someone else. Yeah. And people are like, mate, you need to stop. But I guess that's part of parcel of who we are, isn't it? It is really, Last yeah. little question. I know you're into your boxing, UFC. Is I, it, are you into it? I don't watch it. You know why I said that? Because you, the only reason I brought that in right at the end is because towards the beginning of this, you said what I used to love about boxing in the 70s and 80s was when there was two great boxers that, that fight. Yeah. And the only thing I, I like about the UFC, Dana White, is that they fight each he, other. He says it. You he have says, to. you're gonna fight him. Yeah. You're gonna fight him. So that's the only reason I've started, it went off, <laughs> batteries. Uh, attention to detail. But, um, but that's the only reason why I start liking it, because I thought there's a man at the helm. Yeah. And I think, don't you think boxing would be better if we had someone going, you're fighting him? I know, it's, it's too scattered, AD. There's too many different governing Divisions. bodies and things. Because boxers gone about, oh, it's f f all I care about is the crowd and please, I'm giving people what they want, it's not. There's a guy that I mentioned that's turning down 30, 40, 50 million quid because it, it doesn't suit them to fight at that particular time. I would just like boxing to go back to your number one and two fight. Yeah. And maybe have a little trilogy and then end it. Yeah. But these days, the best fights, I always wanted Pacquiao. 
and um, Mayweather maybe five years earlier. Uh, yeah, oh, a bit more. Even when it would more. have been a good fight around and the time Pacquiao fought Ricky Hatton, yes. that would have been a good time. Uh, do you reckon that will happen with Joshua and Tyson? It won't happen, will it? I, I can't see that fight happening. happening. I know. I just feel it. Yeah. I think Tyson will beat Dillian White. I yeah. think it'd be a tough fight. That one will. Yeah, maybe. It's one of those ones where, on paper, you think, don't be ridiculous. Reach, f- f- speed, quality. I'm, I'm nervous about it. It's like one yeah. of those ones where you think, it's like Liverpool. I'm a big Liverpool fan. Tomorrow we're playing bottom of the table. But they're the kind of ones you slip up against Yeah. when you take them for, for granted a little bit. But I think if he wins that, I don't think he's going to carry on much more. Well, I think that... He's not turned on by money, you know that. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I mean, he likes a few quid. Yeah, yeah, but I get but the impression he's not turned he's on not by it. He's motivated. not doing commercial, 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 endorsements, endorsement. He does a bit yeah. of food, a bit of drink things. I think he'll go, I've got enough money. Yeah. Still living up north with his missus. He's he's in Morecambe. Beautiful man. life. Love, living in Morecambe. He's probably going to give it, oh, I've got enough money now. Why bother? Yeah. I, I think it won't happen either. It's a shame, isn't it? It is a shame, yeah, because like, you know, the politics, is, there's a lot of reasons why that fight hasn't happened so far, but there's a lot of politics, politics as well involved. involved in it. Different and managers. Like, and what's happening at the minute with Dillian White, the fiasco over that fight. Oh, that's a mad one, isn't it? Yeah. Doesn't I mean, want to do press. He's getting seven million quid, Pad. It's not a bad little payday. I know, yeah, it? yeah. You've and like never Tyson been paid. said, his biggest payday was 250 grand. Yeah. And I'm thinking, to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world, do a bit of press. Yeah. And you're a man who hates press, but but, but but I'm not promoting a fight, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, and when it comes down to your image on a poster and things like that, well, what's it? But what, what are you, Tyson what are you Fury to... versus yeah. what? Crazy. Blank? Seven million quid. It's a nice payday. Yeah, it's a good payday. I mean, I take it money doesn't turn you on and press you either, does it? No, but I like to just feel like all I all I ever do is turn to my wife and go, "Are we all right?" Oh, I love that, Paddy. It's genius. And that's <laughs> like, are, are, are we you, all right? I bet you all, really all are. I like, is everything know, all right? Are we okay? And she'll go, "Yeah, yeah, we're all right." Or just watch rain that in a bit. Oh, I love it. <laughs> what a great way to be in life, isn't it? Yeah. Because you know what the key to life is. I've learned it's just one word. It's not even happiness, just contentment. Yeah, content or fulfillment. All I care about is the same rent, bills. I make sure rents and I'm like, I'm happy. Never been turned on by money. I lost millions years ago in a Ponzi scheme. Wow. Made it all back. Yeah. Never been turned on. I still look like a bum. I eat in pie and mash shops. Uh, don't wear Rolexes, don't have Porsches. I love me flat, but yeah. never been turned on by money. No. Never been turned on by, um, I like, if it's a long flight, I take a left on the plane. Why not? But apart from that, it's my only little- Oh, I'm the same, mate. I love a left on a long flight. Yeah. Always take a left, don't care what it costs. No, I, I, listen, it's okay to, to enjoy some things if they're there. But apart from that, never been turned on by money at all. People are always like, you should be doing so much better. You could have, be wise. I'm like, oh, I'm 50. If I get another 15, 20 years, people like talk about leaving legacies. I'm like, yeah, no, even that's it. a trap in I, itself. I, I you enjoy, know, it. enjoy, I enjoy your life. it now. Yeah, I spoil my kids now. I've got three kids and I'm like, people work so hard to save, to invest. And I'm like, what you just said earlier is a beautiful thing. I, I used to say that to my, oh, is everything good? Yeah. I've got everything sorted. If, if there's a bad patch, yeah. And I suppose that's life. That's the way life should be, shouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we, are we okay? You know, I don't, like I'm like, I don't know, wear a watch. I don't have fancy cars. I don't have anything. Not I don't interested. Have the biggest house in the Back home after bit. this little quick haircut. Yeah. Back home. Bit of a trim back home. And look at your, your uh, BAFTAs on the wall and polish them. <laughs> well, I'd have to get them out of the line. I can't wait to tell Max Beasley we did this. I mean, I wrote him the other day and he was like, bro, this is an opportunity because I speak a lot. You know what my only problem is with these? I have a problem listening. I love talking. Yeah. And I didn't want these to be interviews. I'm not Jonathan Ross. I wanted it to be a little chit chat. And Max rang me the, the other week. He went, You talk too much, kid. You, you need, you, you, especially with your heroes. Just, But I can't help it. I like having a chit chat. But he went to me, just play it down, listen, enjoy the buzz. It's only going to happen. This is this is you keep going on about this this fucking actor, this thing, and I'm like, 
And today, I felt myself talking again. Can't help it. Oh, mate, it's all right. It's your default. It's... But I hate the sound of my own voice. I won't watch this back. Won't you know? Oh, not in a million years. No. He played something to me early for 30 seconds. Even when I put something on Instagram, I don't. That's it. I, I've got the confidence to do it, but these things, even though it's with you, I won't watch it. I know what I've chatted about, but the thought of hearing my voice is, makes me feel yeah. sick. I won't watch it, things AD as well. My wife will look at it and yeah. that, you know. That's beautiful, isn't they're it? They're fans of yours. Little haircut then? Well, I said, oh, I'm going to go and I'm going to I've see AD. I've got AD. a special gift set for the missus. Oh, that'd be lovely. Yes, oh, you'll yeah. love it. Oh, I've got an average one for you. <laughs> <laughs> because I could get you a fucking gold-plated Ferrari with a ribbon on it, and you'd be like, oh, get the train, kid. You got me a coffee, mate. Coffee, little trim up. Yeah, And more spoil more. the wife. It's been lovely, yeah, it's mate, been great. <laughs> Cheers, lady. Thank you, brother. No problem. Sisters and brothers, show out.